Hey guys, welcome back. Second video in two days. Um, this video is also going to focus on the newest uh, update, grid update that I posted last night. And last night I showed some uh, results from Charlestown. And what I did today is I decided to start keeping a running slideshow. Okay, I've been using, I use the slideshows for the uh, Triple Crown this year. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a slideshow together uh, that you guys could check daily. And if I have any plays for that day, I'm going to throw them right in the slideshow. Uh, I'm not saying that you have to mimic the plays or whatever, but they're there in case you're doing the same races. You'll see what kind of numbers we come up with. We come up the same numbers, different numbers. Doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong. Uh, it just could mean, again, it's all at, we're all at the mercy at the, of the pace line that we choose for each of these runners. So I'm going to show you what it looks like here. I'm going to go into slideshow mode. <coughs> And I have the link in the description, so remember, when you click on the link, if you want a closer look, click Slideshow. And I'm calling this the Pace Progression Model Tracker. Okay, and it starts with Monmouth Today. All right, there were three, there were four races that I looked at at Monmouth Today. Three, four, five, and six. And if you, could, if you look here, three out of four uh, were pretty accurate. Race three. And I'm not going to go over these in depth, these results. You guys can look at them yourself. Uh... The one problem that comes along, and it's not only with this particular model, I mean, it's it's pretty much with, you know, all the models, all the all the versions of the models, uh, or any type of handicap, and when you're looking at for pace lines, uh, this was a route race, Monmouth 4th, and the only, the only races I could pull from this two horse, and I'm talking about going all the way down the past performances, uh, were like five and a half furlong races, and couple six furlongs that didn't look very good uh, and then you know there was a ton of five and a half furlong races so I just tossed this two and sure enough the two horse won the race okay it came in two five four uh, so you know you're gonna stumble upon that you're gonna get beat no matter what at times as you all know but the other three were pretty much uh, pretty accurate I mean the one horse here uh, was standing out across the board and all the pace possession uh, pace progression ratings uh, the two horse and the four horse that were all in there. So the trifecta was in here. And what I'm not doing with this slideshow is I'm not keeping track of ROI. Okay, I just want to keep track of is this model identifying winners and winning exotics? Okay, not so much, you know, how much did the horse pay and everything. I want to be able to look at results, uh, take these, put them on the editor, uh, and just punch the results in. And move on and not have to worry about putting how much the tries paid how much the exact is paid and all that uh, that's what kind of makes me uh, get a little overtaxed when it comes to keeping track with things like that and that's keeping track of all the uh, different payouts and everything and I know it's important now what I have is I have Mountaineer for tonight on here and there's only one race I skipped and that was race four that was just to me just by looking at it, it was an unplayable race it was a main special weight at the mile distance and there were just too many runners in there that you know never ran ran two turns and again it was like the same scenario as that mammoth uh there's a lot of horses running five coming off of five and a half furlongs the last three four times out five furlongs and so forth but i skipped it uh but this is what i have here and this is the formats i'm going to use you know if i if i like two horses such as the three and the eight here i'm going to put both as my top plays okay uh, if you look, why do I like the three? Well, the three horse has uh, some early showing here. And it's also got the top final fraction. Oops, sorry. And the top turn and finish together. And he finishes for me in the top early, late, and overall. Okay. The eight of the six horse here is, uh, like, I'm on the wrong. Sorry about that. I keep there we go. There we go. The eight horse here, the three horse has top early, top final fraction, and turn and finish. And then he finishes second over here in the early late and the over and the overall. Uh, as you see the eight horse is dominant early in all three early categories. He is showing up in sustainability from the turn on. And he finishes with the top EL. So I made the I made the um and overall, I made the three and the eight my top plays there, followed by the two horse, and then followed by the five, 
who's showing up in the uh, from the turn or the the final and from the turn and final as well. All right, and then you look over here. You can see you can look out. You guys can look on your own, and you could probably really really get an idea of why I'm putting my horses on top. The three and the six here. You can see why I'm using them as my top plays. Uh, the two horse here is a standout for me across the board. And here, the three, four, and the five were tough separators here. They all had unique qualities about them that I didn't want to put one over top of the other. Um, the four horse, I think, is the value in that race out of those three. I could be wrong, but I think the four horse is the value. Um, and then the sixth, seventh, and the eighth. Okay, the six, there's six horses in the sixth. I eliminated three of them, and I come up with the three as my top play. And the six, followed by the four and the six. Race seven, I didn't want to separate the one and the six. I couldn't, I should say. And then I had the four as my second play. And then two, the only other horse I left in there to figure, I put that as my fourth choice. And then finally, the finale, I had the four and the seven, unseparable. Now, you can go and you can look and see other factors such as, uh, you know, the last out finishers, is it coming out of a key race, next out winners, all those other qualitative goodies, you know, that we used over in thorough capping. You know, you can look at them as a separator. But what I'll do is my separator, when it comes to playing a win bet, my separator will be, are any of these two horses, the four or the seven, are they at a legitimate odds where it's worth putting three to five dollars down to win on it and maybe getting 15 plus dollars back okay but that's what i'm gonna do for now on i'm gonna i'm going to just i'm probably gonna figure out one of monday tracks later tonight and i will add i will add it to this uh pro this uh what do you call it um slideshow and then from there we'll just move on and i'll just keep a running uh, when tonight's over with, I will update these grids so that they look like these with the actual winners. And that way, at particular times when you're bored and you want to go back and maybe see uh, your, for yourselves what kind of trends are working. And as I mentioned before, I think it's really, really uh, important to know how the tracks have been running lately. And so, for example, tonight starts off Mountaineer. Mountaineer will run tomorrow. It runs on Tuesday and it runs on Wednesday. So, if you're doing a mountain a mountaineer spree for the next four days, uh, you get an idea of the bias. And let's say this, the one turn races are winning the majority are winning um, early or close to the lead. Then I may be able to separate this one and six and put the six as my top play over the one. But going into the new week, I'm not sure how the track is going to run. So it's pretty uh, safe to use the one and the six here. Um, as both my top plays. If uh, any, anything else wins, I mean, if the four horse wins, I mean, it's not going to be a surprise to me. But if, let's say, the two, the three, or the five win, that just means the model was off uh, for whatever reason. You know, you take it as a loss. Okay, so I'm going to put the link to this presentation down in the descriptions for you guys to follow on a regular basis if you want. And uh, I'm going to also enable comments. So anybody that's viewing it can comment on a particular slide and just hit the comment button, throw your comments in, and then uh, I'll be able to read them and I'll be able to respond to them and so forth. So we can have a little bit of dialogue in here as well. And also we can have the dialogue in the Discord. If you're not a member of our Discord, there's also an invite link in the description below of this video for the Discord as well. All right. Thanks for tuning in. I'll talk to you soon.